So we covered a little bit of the classification of partial differential equations, but there's an important further classification uh, that we're going to make. And, and, and it's important to note that this is, we're, we're getting down there, right? We already specified the difference between linear and nonlinear. Um, now we're starting to specify, so only for linear second order and, and lower, and only for linear second order PD, partial differential equations, that's what we're doing uh, this subsequent, so this further classification for. And the way that you do this classification is that we introduce something, we introduce this notation, so th this looks similar to uh, the, um, the, the general um, uh, conic section notation, so this is, we're just going to say A partial, partial of U uh, with uh, second partial of U with respect to x plus b uh, second partial of u uh, with respect to um, so this is the mixed partial with respect to x and y and y um, plus c uh, partial so second partial of u uh, with respect to y plus d equals zero, where A, B, and C, A, B, and C are functions of X and Y, and D is a function, these are, these are linear, so they've got to be linear well, actually, those don't. They can be, they can be whatever functions of x and y. Uh, but d is a function. D has to be a linear function of, uh, of x, y, u, and du, dx. It, it, so it has to be linear in u du dx, du dy, and you get the idea. So it, d is a function of x, y, u, and the first, uh, the first derivatives. So uh, if this is if this is true, uh, then we have the the following classification. So we have so it actually just depends on a, b, and c. So we define this, and and you can write this in matrix form, and and the but you have this. And then this is actually the matrix determinant. But if you've got this b squared minus 4ac, and this, this should look a little bit familiar, but um, this b squared minus 4ac. So if b squared minus 4ac, so when you write the system out in this form, if b squared minus 4ac, uh, if this is uh, less than 0, so if it's negative, if less than 0, then uh, this is called an elliptic elliptic partial differential equation. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then it's called a parabolic partial differential equation. And if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, then it's hyperbolic. Now, it's not that we have uh, some uh, fascination with uh, conic sections or anything, but this ends up being a really good way to classify these partial differential equations, and each of these behaves uh, differently, and so it, it warrants uh, different, typically warrants uh, different solution methods. Uh, so now let's provide an example of each of these. Uh, so the, the, the example, the classic example sort of of the elliptic partial differential equation uh, is the partial of t with respect to x. So this is second partial of t with respect to x plus the second partial of t uh, with respect to y equals zero. And so this is this is Laplace's equation. And if this was a function of x and y, which would mean a non-zero d term, then um, then with this would be Poisson's equation. Um, so that's Laplace. 
Laplace's equation. So then we have parabolic, and, and again, a uh, classic example here is the partial of, of t, where t is temperature usually, uh, with respect to time, uh, is equal to k prime. So this isn't a derivative with respect to anything. This is just a parameter that, as far as, as, far as this equation is concerned, of uh, the second partial of t with respect to x. And this is the heat equation. Heat equation. La Laplace, whoop. Laplace equation. This heat equation. And then the final one, the final example that we have of Laplace equation is the second partial of y with respect to x is equal to 1 over c times uh, the second partial of y with respect to t. And this is, again, this is the wave equation. The idea here is for Laplace equation, see we have two different spatial dimensions and um, and then we just have we just have steady state and so uh, moving in the two to spatial dimensions and we have uh, we have time so the time isn't changing it doesn't matter what the time is um, so uh, it's going to be the same everywhere uh, for this heat equation we have uh, a partial derivative with respect to time so we have one t time dimension uh, and then we have the second partial of, of temperature with respect to x. So we have a time dimension and then, uh, and then a, uh, a spatial dimension. So what that amounts to is having sort of a different solution uh, for the heat, uh, a, different, uh, a different solution uh, for separate points in time. So as time changes, uh, the solution, if you were to think of it as an ordinary differential equation, the solution would be changing uh, with time. Uh, sort of a similar uh, case with the wave equation. We have uh, we have uh, one spatial dimension that's denoted by x, and then a time dimension, and so we have the solution uh, depends on on the time. So uh, that ends the discussion then on on classification. So this is really important because now from here on out we're not going to deal with general. Uh, differential equations. So we're going to look at only uh, solution mo methods for elliptic, really really just for the elliptic and parabolic we're actually going to give examples uh, using uh, three different solution methods um, of how actually we're really just going to show two solution methods for these two and then uh, simplify for the third solution method. So uh, this, is, uh, this is then a classification of partial differential equations.